Well, we still have a game to recap and talk about for a lacrosse team. You know what I mean. Is it time for another episode of? Hi there, it's Brett Hornby here, and welcome back to another episode of My Calgary Roughnecks this month. Here's our season three, episode three. Uh, so we'll talk about how things went in January 2022 in the 2022 National Lacrosse season. As we know, I've made a few videos on it that there were actually a lot more scheduled than actually got played in the month of January. For the Calgary Roughnecks, just given what's been going on, however, in later months, we are going to definitely be playing catch-up. So before I get to talk about how January 22 went for my Calgary Roughnecks, if you want to follow along with this Calgary Sports fans journey, just uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe. I mostly do talk Calgary Sports on my YouTube channel, and I do have plans in 2022 to do a couple uh, video series, uh, so you can stay tuned for that. So if you're subscribed, you'll know what that is, and of course, uh, I have my second channel in Brett Hornby Shorts, where I exclusively put my short form content on there, so I appreciate like subscribe both here on my main channel, as well as my second channel. So I'll bring up my notes, and uh, talk about what I mean, that uh, there was a lot more that was scheduled than was actually played for the Carter Roughnecks. So going into January from December, it first looked like Calgary had three games to play in the month of January. However, they were only able to actually play one game as uh, a couple more games got postponed due to various reasons, mostly with the Omicron variant. So the postponed games that were happened in January, well, the second game that's been already been postponed for the Calgary Ref next this season. Originally, they were scheduled to play on Saturday, January 8th. They would have been on the road taking on the Rochester Nighthawks at the Blue Cost Arena. That would have been a 5 p.m. ball drop then. That game did get postponed, and that was the only game that was postponed for the NLL that week. Well, that game now has been rescheduled to uh, Friday, April the 22nd, so we won't get to hear that game until I get to the April episode, actually looking at the schedule, I mean, there's only one game that the Roughnecks actually played in January. They have four games on the schedule in February, four games in March, and six in April. So April's definitely going to be a much, much longer month. And so that was the first game that was postponed for the Calgary Roughnecks. Then the second game in January that got postponed was originally scheduled on Saturday, January 22nd, that the Calgary Roughnecks would have been back at home hosting the Vancouver Warriors at the Scotiabank Southern. Well, that game now has been rescheduled to Friday, February the 18th. So those were the postponed games for the Calgary Roughnecks. So that's how January has shaped up up to this point. So they had one more game that was still left on the schedule, and that game actually happened. So let's talk about that game now. So this will be the fourth game of the season for the Calgary Roughnecks, as they, uh, they played on Saturday, January the 29th, as the Calgary Roughnecks were on the road. They were taking on the San Diego Seals. This was at the Pachanga Arena at 8 p.m. ball drop, and this was the first game that the Calgary Roughnecks have played since the home opener on Friday, December the 17th, which happened to be against the same San Diego Seals. So I guess it was 43 days in between days. Games for the Calgary Roughnecks. So how did that affect the Calgary Roughnecks with that such long layoff? We're having three games postponed plus a bye week. Well, at least now that no, no one of those postponed games happened. Well, in the first quarter... It actually looked pretty good for the Calgary Roughnecks. 
as there were definitely a lot of penalties in this game for both sides. It seems like uh, Calgary San Diego games have been a little more chippy when it comes to lacrosse, so there were a lot of special teams played, but the first goal of the game went to Calgary. It was Zach Haywires who got on the power play goal at 138. So Calgary took a 1 0 lead early into this game. And then it was Kyle Walters who got the next goal for Calgary at 323. So now Calgary had an early 2 0 lead. So unlike the game when it was the home opener, the Calgary Roughnecks had a slow start, but this one they had a fast start. And then at 4 1 of the fourth first quarter on the power play, it was Austin Stats who got San Diego on the board. So it was 2 1 for. Calgary at that point in the first quarter. And then a couple more goals from the Dixons. First it was Hayden Dixon who got Calgary up 3-1 at 424 in the first quarter. And then Curtis Superman Dixon at 450. So now Calgary had a 4-1 lead at that point. And then things settled down a little bit until the 842 minute mark of the first quarter. It was Curtis Dixon getting his second goal of the game to make it 5-1 for Calgary. And then Trey Reinhold for San Diego makes it a 5-2 game as he scored at the 13:50 minute mark. And then Reese Callies got Calgary its last goal of the first quarter at 14:22. So Calgary actually was looking good, leading 6-2 after the first quarter. So they didn't look like they were too rusty from the long layoff with all the postponements. At this point, kind of was the opposite of, like I mentioned, the home opener where Calgary got off to a slow start and then picked it up in the second half when it was too little too late. So 6-2 Calgary going into the second quarter. Well, how did things go going into the first half? Well, San Diego definitely had a couple of quick goals to start off the second quarter. It was Zach Greer who scored for San Diego at the 119 minute mark to make it 6-3 for Calgary. And there's Trey LeCourier who got the another goal for San Diego, this time at 153. So now it was 6-4 for Calgary, but just under two minutes into the second quarter. And then it was Trey LeClaire got his second goal of the game for the San Diego Seals at 522. So now it was 6-5 for Calgary. And then Austin Stats tied it up at 6-6 as San Diego opened up the second quarter or six minutes. 6.05 for the Austin Stats goal. So now it's a 6-6 game. So San Diego definitely was starting to press back in the second quarter. However, on a power play, it was Jesse King who scored for Calgary at the 9.07 minute mark to put Calgary back up 7-6 at this point in the second quarter. And there's Kyle Walters who got another one at the 10.05 minute mark. So 8-6 Calgary at that point. And then Marshall King scored. At 11.51 to make it 9-2-6 for Calgary. And then it was Zach Greer for San Diego at 13.18. Made it a 9-7 game. And then San Diego got a goal from Justin Noble at 13.52 to make it 9-8 for Calgary. So that's how things stood at halftime. As Calgary had a 9-8 lead going into the second half. Excuse me, as Calgary had a 6-2 start. In the first quarter, however, San Diego had a 6-3 second quarter to make it the 9-8 tally for the Calgary Roughnecks at halftime. So now going into the third quarter, it was Jesse King that scored fairly early in the third quarter at 131 to give Calgary a two-goal lead at 10-8. However, it was Wesley Berg, the former Calgary hitman, or Roughneck I meant to say, he did not score until the 10.56 minute mark of the third quarter, so there was definitely a lot less uh, scoring to go in the third quarter. So it was 10-9 for Calgary going into the fourth quarter. So in the third quarter, each team only scoring a goal. However, going into the fourth quarter, it kind of felt similar to, similar to the uh, home opener that San Diego actually ultimately was able to put this one away. Well, 55 seconds into the fourth quarter, it was Austin Stats who scored for San Diego to tie up the game at 10 piece. And then uh, Ray Bradley, who got for the goal for the San Diego Seals at a 138, made it 11 to 10. 
And then Wesley Berg also scored another goal, this time at 152, to make it 12-10 to for San Diego. So San Diego definitely scored three quick goals in the first two minutes of the fourth quarter. And then it was former Calgary Roughneck Dane Dolby who scored the dagger at 706. There were 705 of the fourth quarter to make it 13 to 10. And actually that was no more scoring for the uh, game at that point. So ultimately San Diego, they won this game 13 to 10. So Calgary was outshot, outscored. It was uh, 5 to 1 in the second half where Calgary only got one goal in the third quarter. So ultimately, as I mentioned, San Diego, once again, they won this game 13 to 10. Shots and goal, well, it was 41 40 for the uh, San Diego Seals in this one. So leading the way for the uh, Calgary Roughnecks, it was uh, looking at the leading scorers. Well, Jesse King had two goals and one assist for three points. And then uh, Curtis Dixon had two goals and one and one assist for three points as well. Tanner Cook got three assists. Marshall King got one goal, two assists for three points. And then it was Zach Haywires who had a goal and three assists for four points. So that was the leading school point getters for the uh, Calgary Roughnecks. For the uh, San Diego Seals, well, Wesley Berg had two goals and three assists for five points as well as Terry Leclerc had two goals and one assist for three points. Dane Doby actually, he had a quieter game in this one. I guess it was a little less emotional for him compared to coming back to Calgary. He had a goal and two assists, three points. However, it was just Noble who had a, a big game. He had one goal, six assists for seven points. And Austin Stats, he was definitely the lean point getter with three goals, six assists for nine points. So that's basically all the leading goal scorers and point getters for both sides. So when it comes to the goaltending story of the game, it was Christian Del Bianco who was in that for uh, Calgary. He made 29 saves for Calgary, or 28 saves. And then when it comes to the San Diego Sea as well, there was a split duty here. Well, Frankie Siliano, the former Calgary Roughneck, got the win. He made 27 saves, and he had seven goals against him. However, it was Chris Orio who had nine saves on three goals against for San Diego, so it was a split duty for the San Diego Seals. So that is the only game for the Calgary Roughnecks as they lost the only game they played against the uh, San Diego Seals. 13 to 10. So if we just take a look at uh, player stats and standings before we look ahead, and I already call this uh, an episode a month for the Calgary Roughnecks. Well, they only got to play one game and that, that is what it is. So leading point getter for the Calgary Roughnecks is Jesse King as they played four games. He has five goals, 17 assists for 22 points. Second in scoring in four games is Curtis Superman Dixon. He has four goals from four games played is 11 goals, six assists for 17 points. And then Tyler Pace, after he's only actually played in two games, he has five goals, four assists for nine points. And then Dan Taylor has played in three games. He has two goals, seven assists for nine points. And around the top five is Hayden Dixon. After four games, he has five goals, three assists for eight points. So it's still a little early considering uh, we're only four games in. So then when it comes to the Calgary Roughnecks, Christian Del Bianco, well, he's played in every second for the Calgary Roughnecks this season. He's one in three with a goals against average of 14 2 which... He's actually a little high, considering this is lacrosse, and a save percentage of 720, which I'm going to say from what I've seen from Christian Del Bianco, he definitely does not look like the same Christian Del Bianco that we had over the years, including the 2019 season when he was the top goalie for the Gary Reflex when he won the championship, which I guess you could still say we're the famed champions. So now, if you look at the stats, the uh, standings now, if you look at both conferences, the East and the West, well, the East, Buffalo Bandits lead the way. They're 4-0. And, oh, and then follow back with the Halifax Thunderbirds. They're second at 3-1. And, and then the Philadelphia Wings. They're third at 5-3. and three. So there's definitely been postponements in that. So everything's unbalanced right now. In fourth place is the Albany Firewolves. They're 3-2 and two for fourth. Fifth place in the East is Toronto Rock. They're 3-3. Three and three. And then sixth place is the Georgia Swarm. They are two and four. 
Seventh place is the Rochester Nighthawks. They are two and four. And then last place for the East Division. I guess there's one, two, three, four, five, eight teams. So eighth place is New York Riptide. They are one and four. So now go to the West, where the Cowboy Roughnecks is. There's only six teams in the uh, West Division for conference. Well, San Diego actually is leading the West at five and one. Then the Colorado Mammoth. They are four and one for second. Third place is the Vancouver Warriors. They are two and three. Fourth place is the Saskatchewan Rush. They are two and four. Fifth place is our Calgary Roughnecks. They are one and three. And then the new team, based out of Fort Worth, the Panther City Lacrosse. They are one and five. So that's how the standings look. At this point, it's everything's just unbalanced because of all the postponements and that. But uh, at least we've got a game in for January. So now, this is the part of the episode, which already seems already. Well, we only played one game. It is the part where we look ahead. And the Calgary Roughnecks have four games scheduled on the schedule for February. And the hope is, is that restrictions ease, that they can have more fans in attendance, which is one of the reasons why games were also postponed. So let's take a look at the next four games for the Calgary Roughnecks. And... Uh, it's definitely not going to be easy because they have a back-to-back -back with the Colorado Mammoth. So this will be their fifth game this season. Starting off February will be on Saturday, February the 5th. The Calgary Roughnecks will be on the road as they'll be taking on the Colorado Mammoth, as I mentioned. 7 p.m. ball drop at the Ball Arena, which that is the name the arena that is called now. They used to be the Pepsi Center because it's the same place where the Colorado Avalanche play. And then on game six was that rescheduled game. This game will be on Friday, February 11th. Originally, it was scheduled for Saturday, February 12th, but with uh, games being postponed with the Calgary Flames, Calgary Roughnecks, and the Calgary Evan, the schedule makers definitely had a heck of a time. So the next home game, Friday, February 11th, Calgary will be hosting the Colorado Mammoth, and this will be an 8 p.m. ball drop at the Scotiabank Saldom. So that's definitely maybe a day where I'm going to need to take a pregame nap and Hope it doesn't go to overtime. That's what happens with Friday night games. And then the next game on Friday, February 18th, as that game was the scheduled game from uh, Saturday, January 22nd, the Calgary Roughnecks will be taking on the Vancouver Warriors. That'll be a 7 p.m. ball drop at the Scotiabank Saladome. And then game eight to wrap up February. Well, Calgary will be playing actually a day and a half later on Sunday, February 20th, as they'll be on the road to make their first ever visit to Dallas-Fort Worth to take on Panthers, which will be a 3 p.m. ball drop at the Dickies Arena. So that's how February looks for the Calgary Roughnecks. So all I can really say is that more things were postponed for the Calgary Roughnecks in the month of January. I did kind of say if we had a word of the year for 2022, postponed would already be in the bag. For the word of the year, as everything has been postponed at this point, but hopefully things are starting to stabilize. And as I mentioned, the Calgary Roughnecks are going to have a very, very busy stretch coming up. As I mentioned, they got four games scheduled in February, they got four games scheduled in March, and then they got six games scheduled in April. So uh, they'll definitely be more jam packed episodes, but uh, I just drew my game recaps as they come along. So this is it for January. So, as I can say, if you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fan's journey, home the Flames, Hitman, Roughnecks, and Stampeders. I mostly do talk Calgary sports on my YouTube channel where I recap of games and stories and all that. But I do a variety of non sports comments when I have time, like personal blogs, tap to comedy, and do share my experience with them on the road. We're a sport event, and I have done some blogging to go, which, uh, Speaking of things being postponed, well, February, the Chinook Blast is coming back for another year in Calgary, so I plan to take part in that, so hopefully I can make some content on that as well. It's another reason to like and subscribe. So if that all sounds like the interest to watch, to follow along this Calgary Sports Fan's journey, you know what you do, just uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe. I also have my other social links down in the description below for other ways to follow me, and of course my second channel in Brett Hornby Shorts, where I exclusively put my short front content on there. So I appreciate my like and subscribe both here on my main channel as well as my second channel. So all I'll be saying is go next go. 
thanks for watching and uh, it's definitely been a very very slow start to the season just because of all the games being postponed and seems like so far the Roughnecks this season I'm going to say they look good in one quarter and then they stumble in the next quarter that's so far what I've seen from the team so far this season hopefully they can figure that out and uh, maybe having a more consistent schedule will do that but We'll see you next month in February, especially with a couple games against the Colorado Mammoth. So that's all I say. Go next show. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.